I was watching this reaction video on YouTube the other day, this guy named Jamal that was reacting to this particular song. And I thought, oh, I need to go listen to that again because this was a great song. And this came out when I was a senior in high school. And I always thought that the guitar solo was probably amazing, but you literally can't hear it. It's on the out chorus. And this guitarist doesn't really get any credit for how great of a solo is because it's inaudible. Let me play it for you first so you can hear it. And then I actually have the tracks and I'm going to play it for you turned up to a proper volume so you can hear that this is really a phenomenal guitar solo. Check this out. You'll be surprised at the tune. What a great vamp to solo over. I mean, you can't hear that. It's the lowest thing in the mix. It's like you have this whole long solo. It keeps going. you can hear it is on the very end of the fade it just kind of appears now i don't know what these guys were doing when they were mixing it right this is ridiculous this is definitely a great solo but none of us could ever figure it out because we can't hear how it even comes in but i always had the sense that this is a burning solo now this christopher cross record the first record which came out in 79 christopher cross a lot of people think oh yacht rock it's cheesy or whatever it's a great record. And I think that the term Yacht Rock, which happens to have some of my favorite groups in it, Steely Dan, Doobie Brothers, Christopher Cross, there's tons of incredibly great music that gets kind of dismissed with this term that's become, I wouldn't say a joke, but it's just really a misnomer. This is really a rock. This is a rockin' song, Ride Like the Wind. But this solo here kind of robs Christopher Cross of his... of of the justice of being a great guitarist. Now, another guitarist that I heard for the very first time in 1979 or 1980 was Eric Johnson. Now, I think his, he and Christopher Cross knew each other from Texas, but Eric plays a solo on the song Minstrel Gigolo here. And it's the, literally the first time I heard him. Once again, the solo's too low. But... Tell it's Eric Johnson. I mean, come on. Little did we know that that was going to lead to Cliffs of Dover a few years later. There's also a solo on here by Larry Carlton. There's actually two solos, but one of them is on the second track, I Really Don't Know Anymore. It has one of the weirdest guitar solos on it. Check this out. Yeah. Now that Larry Carlton solo is one to be studied as well. And that's one that I learned when I was a kid. And that's when I started hearing those notes like these, these 13s and things like that, all these upper extensions that he's playing in there. But let's get to the Christopher Cross solo. Here's the actual solo played at the proper volume. Here it is.
Cross got robbed. This is a killer solo. If it were at the right level, people would have been like, man, I want Christopher Cross to play on my record. Let me solo the solo. Okay, check this out. Great tone. is really kind of like a combination of Terry Kath um, has has some Lukather in it. It's got some Peter Frampton type things in it, but it's really unique to Christopher Cross. I mean, he is a great guitar player. Now I tried to play along with this thing and it's tricky actually. Let me play along with the solo just soloed and show you how hard some of these licks are. <laughs> I normally could pick those back in the old days, but it's hard to kind of get my... I think it's cleaner to actually hybrid pick it, but these are... are uh... Love those licks, right? But this... Uh... Right there, Angus Young. Jimmy Page, all those great licks strung together, but really in the pocket. That's the thing that makes us so good. Cooking. He goes, da 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 Oh my god, that's amazing. Listen again, listen again. So clean, too. I mean, really, listen. You can really hear that amp is cooking, right? It's You can hear the sound of a real amplifier. Let's listen to that spot again. I love how he does that polyrhythm there. He kind of turns. like Frampton there at that part. They had to re-release this song with the solo at the proper level, or just you can just watch this video and you can hear it at the proper level. But let's listen to it one more time how it is on the album. Listen. <laughs> Those parts are just vamp parts, and they should have been turned way down at this point. I mean, that's really the feature, right? That's the thing that comes in. I mean, they're great parts. All these, all these parts are all really well done. You hear this? Michael McDonald. The horns. Those are 
are just auxiliary parts though. The, the main thing is the guitar solo. So anyways, this is my chance to make this solo right. I didn't even know that I had the tracks to it and I could actually turn it up to the proper level, but I always knew there was a great solo hidden in there. That's all for now. Don't forget to subscribe, ring the bell and leave a comment. Check out my new Quick Lessons Pro guitar course that just came out. Also the Beato book if you want to learn about music theory. That's how you do it. And check out my Beato ear training course at beatoeartraining.com. And don't forget, if you want to support the channel even more, think about becoming a member of the Beato Club. Thanks so much for watching.